people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. The highly anticipated visit of Bangladeshi Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina to India witnessed a number of agreements signed and the two sides committing to further bolstering their time-tested partnership. While the two countries reviewed the entire gamut of ties, as many as seven MOUs spanning across the energy sector, water sharing, railways and IT were inked. From jointly developing thermal projects to improving multi-layered connectivity, both India and Bangladesh are committed to assisting each other in their growth. Bangladeshi Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's recent visit to India marked the advent of a significant chapter in the New Delhi-Dhaka bilateral relationship. The highly anticipated visit witnessed a number of agreements signed and the two sides committing to further bolstering their time-tested partnership. While the two countries reviewed the entire gamut of ties, as many as seven MOUs spanning across the energy sector, water sharing, railways and IT were in. From jointly developing thermal projects to improving multi-layered connectivity, both India and Bangladesh are committed to assisting each other in their growth. The neighboring South Asian countries are also two of the fastest growing economies in the world, and their commitment to a deeper engagement at all levels between the two countries has proven to be high yielding for both. पिछले कुछ सालों में हमारा आपसी सहयोग भी हर क्षेत्र में तेजी से बढ़ा है आज बांग्लादेश भारत का सबसे बड़ा डेवलपमेंट पार्टनर और क्षेत्र में हमारा सबसे बड़ा ट्रेड पार्टनर है The tenacity to resolve bilateral differences or issues through dialogue and diplomacy has been the underlying principle of the engagement between the two countries. It is such diplomacy and dialogue that resulted in the signing of an MOU on water sharing at the Kushiara River. The agreement will benefit the people of India's northeastern Assam state, as well as the people of the Silet region of Bangladesh. Negotiations are also ongoing to resolve the protracted issue of water sharing of the Tista River. Prime Minister Hasina, who hailed the Indian government for being cooperative and supportive, said her government was consistently engaging with the Indian side to achieve mutually beneficial results. We focus on possible ways to materialize our commitment and accommodate each other's priorities in a mutually beneficial manner. Connectivity, trade and commerce, investment, water resources management, security, border management and lines of credit are some of the areas we discussed. Whether it is diplomacy or trade, both Delhi and Dhaka have synergized their efforts to attain maximum dividends. The trade between the two neighbors has grown significantly in the past few years. In the fiscal year 2021 to 2022, Bangladesh emerged as the largest trade partner for India and South Asia. It was also the fourth largest export destination for Indian goods across the world. With a 66% year-on-year rise, Indian exports grew from 9.69 billion USD in 2020 to 2021 to 16.15 billion USD in 2021 to 2022. The two countries have also been negotiating a comprehensive economic partnership agreement which will enable both India and Bangladesh to retain and secure all benefits in their trade ties, even after Bangladesh's status elevates to a developing country, as per the UN definition of the term. Bangladesh ke niryat ke liye, aaj Bharat pure Asia mein sabse bada market hai. Is vruddhi ko और गति देने के लिए हम द्विपक्षीय कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव इकोनॉमिक पार्टनरशिप एग्रीमेंट पर शीघ्र चर्चा शुरू करेंगे हमने आईटी अंतरिक्ष 
और न्यूक्लियर एनर्जी जैसे सेक्टर में भी सहयोग बढ़ाने का निश्चय किया The two countries share historical, social, and deep cultural affinities. Since 1971, five decades since Bangladesh was formed with Indian assistance, the relationship between Delhi and Dhaka has been marked by trust, cooperation, and mutual respect. The successive governments have endeavored to strengthen the cooperation between the two. The current governments have taken the relationship to an unprecedented high, with the future looking even more promising for both India and Bangladesh. Moving on, Pakistan is in the throes of a humanitarian emergency. The catastrophic floods in the country, triggered by erratic monsoon, are desperate to break all earlier records. Exposing a set of problems that paralyze Pakistan, the floodwaters are wiping away everything, including future of many. For those who have left their homes, the situation is dire. We bring you a report. Over 1,300 dead, millions displaced, and the death toll continues to mount. Pakistan is in the throes of a humanitarian emergency. The catastrophic floods in the country, triggered by erratic monsoon, are desperate to break all earlier records. Exposing a set of problems that paralyze Pakistan, the floodwaters are wiping away everything, including future of many. For those who have left their homes, the situation is dire. Sela mama hai kya hai? Woh badi tabai thi yeh saal ke. Badi Allah na rasool kare jitte sela paaye maan jo tabai thi wohan jitte ke the. Par vadhe mein vadhe si garib manchar da mala hai. Asa ke khuda aaj ko samata hai khaya na leka shay kono diya. Edo asa par dwar thi aaye. Haan Allah kare the khatam thi wohan jara rasool kare the sab ko maan je vatan de vapa dhonye. Pregnant women in Pakistan are being forced to cross flood water just to give birth. Rubina Malla is one among them who took a perilous three-hour boat journey across flood waters to get to the nearest hospital. Sitting in a school building, being used as shelter for displaced, she is fanning her child. Rubina's family originally decided to stay at home because they had no way to go, and her family set up a camp on roof. However, when she started having labor pains, her husband brought a boat to take her to the hospital. हमारे जोर और पानी मन पानी फेर गया हम लोग बन बहुत परेशान हो गए तो हम कहाँ जाएंगे कैसे जाएंगे मेरा हस्बैंड चल गया कश्ती लेके आया कश्ती में हम दोनों गए हॉस्पिटल में हम गरीब थे तो सेवन हॉस्पिटल में गए थे वहाँ पर वरी मुझे मेरी डिलीवरी हुई ही As the country continues to grapple with debilitating floods, hospitals in the affected areas are overcrowded with patients. Currently at risk of starvation, people living in several camps are contracting waterborne diseases. According to the staff at the civil hospital of Dadu city in Sindh province, they have received over 72,000 patients in recent days, mostly suffering from diarrhea and gastric illness. हालांकि बारिशों की वजह से हमारे यहाँ दादू डिस्ट्रिक्ट में गेस्ट्रो में और डायरिया में और मलेरिया में काफी केस ज्यादा हुए हैं। तकरीबन 150 से ज्यादा डायरिया के केस जो डेली हमें इधर एडमिट करते हैं और तकरीबन 5 से 10 ये मलेरिया के केस भी हम रोजाना दर दाखल करते हैं। जो ये पानी जमा होने के जैसे मलेरिया हुआ है और पानी जमा होने की वजह से ये सफाई ना हुए उसमें डायरिया में काफी है तक इजाफा हुआ है। This is at least the fourth major flood within a generation in Pakistan. Previous floods occurred in 1992, 1993 and 2010. An increased frequency of such events in the country must be attributed to global temperature rise, particularly since the 1970s. Moving on. India has incorporated its first domestically developed aircraft carrier INS Vikrant into its naval arsenal. 
With this military milestone, India has joined the elite group of nations that have the niche craft and that have the competence to develop an aircraft carrier on their own. The timing of Vikrant's incorporation holds immense significance for it comes amidst increasing turbulence in the Indo-Pacific region and when India is staring at a joint Pakistan-China threat along its eastern and western marine fronts. A roaring floating beast, adding a lethal dimension to India's two-front deterrent strategy. This is INS Vikram. India, in line with its ambitions of Atmanir Bharta, or self-reliance, recently added its first domestically developed aircraft carrier, INS Vikram, into its naval arsenal. With this military milestone, India has joined the elite group of nations that have the niche craft and that have the competence to develop an aircraft carrier on their own. Prime Minister Narendra Modi presided over the event where INS Vikrant was officially commissioned. With a capacity to accommodate a crew of about 1,600, this 262-meter giant warship will be flying up to 26 MiG-29K fighter jets, four Kamov Ka-31 helicopters, two HAL Dhruv NUH utility helicopters, and four MH-60R multi-role helicopters. The timing of Vikrant's incorporation holds immense significance for it comes amidst increasing turbulence in the Indo-Pacific region, and when India is staring at a joint Pakistan-China threat along its eastern and western marine fronts. Today, offshore petrol vessels, ho, submarines, or aircraft carriers, today, the force of Naosena is increasing from the force of Naosena. In this way, in हमारी नेवी और मजबूत होगी। Vikram Sentry also marks the advent of India's indigenous military expedition that experts believe will take enormous leaps in the coming decades. With Vikram as its flagship, New Delhi is aggressively shifting its gears towards domestic manufacturing for its military needs. The ship can, like any other warship, be utilized to project power to ensure safety and security at high seas and also provide a credible deterrence with extreme visibility. All three wings of its military, the Army, Air Force and Navy, have been working to enhance their indigenous manufacturing capabilities. Tejas, the indigenously developed light combat aircraft, has equipped the Indian Air Force with much-needed firepower and operational requirements. The fourth-generation Indian Tejas aircrafts have the capacity of carrying the same amount of weapons, including heavy missiles, that bigger warplanes carry, from precision-guided and standoff weaponry to long-range beyond visual-range missiles. the Indian aircraft can take down enemy's planes from a safe distance. Uh, the enhancement of maritime power for India is a big boost and INS Vikrant is one of the element of the improvement of the maritime combat power. The Indian Army as well has been expeditiously enhancing its artillery arsenal through indigenous means. Battle tanks to the most sophisticated of assault rifles used by Indian soldiers are being manufactured in Indian facilities. New Delhi has set itself fresh targets that it says will bolster its capabilities on two fronts. Self-reliance and the other, expansion of India's military export. The developments are here for all to see. Not only has India secured the license to develop Brahmos supersonic cruise missiles indigenously, but is now exporting the missile as well. A clear reflection of how brand India is changing the status quo and challenging the monopoly of the global arms market. The Indian government has set a target of exporting defense equipment worth 5 billion USD by 2024. 
a significant spike in what it was exporting until a few years back. The arsenal it aims to provide to the world include the Akash and Brahmos missiles and the Tejas aircraft. It also seeks to sell Astra, the beyond visual range air-to-air -air missile, battle tanks, sonars, and a variety of radars. With the second largest number of troops, the third largest defense spender, India is on its way to become an even stronger military force with this indigenous push providing it a more robust weapon arsenal. Some observers say that the world must acknowledge and be wary of India's advancements, especially Pakistan and China, who are anxious about India's rising military presence. Time now for Asia This Week, the stories from across the continent. Days after the end of a brief bout of fighting last month, Gazan workers are returning to work across the border under a permit scheme launched as part of Israel's strategy of using economic inducements to help stabilize the volatile enclave. For those lucky enough to obtain a permit, a job in Israel can bring in 10 times of what they could earn at home, a powerful incentive in an impoverished area where 2.3 million people live squeezed into a narrow coastal strip. According to the World Bank, unemployment in Gaza runs at about 50% and more than half the population lives in poverty, exacerbated by repeated bursts of fighting and a years-long economic blockade imposed by both Israel and Egypt. The permits were introduced as part of Israel's twin strategy of enforcing military control while offering some economic benefits to reduce tensions following an 11-day war last year with Hamas, which controls Gaza. Israel has also promised further loosening of economic restrictions depending on positive signs from Hamas. This is a windmill farm for power generation in Kamosi city of Ibaraki prefecture in Japan. Windmills are lined up on the coast because of the ability to generate electricity because of continuous flow of wind. Wind energy is one of the best sources of renewable energy. A number of companies are targeting construction, operation and management of windmill power generation as a feasible and profitable business opportunity. A windmill with a longitudinal wing can change the angle and continue to rotate according to the strength of the wind. Box devices enable them to be stacked or placed horizontally. Currently, the installation of windmill on the sea is attracting attention, but Japan has geographical challenges. This model is a vertical shaft windmill. It has an upright rotating shaft. It is available to float. The gravity of the windmill facility is low to prevent it failing into the sea. A marine technology professor and a material manufacturer are working together to make a development. A number of windmills are being installed on the seashores in Japan despite the geographical challenges. Solar power is the renewable source of energy where the sun's energy is converted into electricity via usage of solar panels. A number of solar power generation companies are present in Japan. All the firms are coming up with new variety of products for solar panel installation and management. <laughs> The 
The solar panel move according to the direction of the sun so it can store sunlight more efficiently. Managing and cleaning panel is a major task for large scale facilities like mega solar. Installing the rail and brush on the solar panel and clean them under computer control. This clean product is used in the snow area in winter. Technological advancements to operate renewable energy more efficiently play an important role in achieving the goal of carbon neutrality worldwide. Being an agrarian society, India celebrates a number of harvest festivals that form an integral part of the country's cultural legacy and over the centuries they have evolved in various forms. Onam, which marks the commemoration of the Vamana form of Lord Vishnu and Nuakhai, an agriculture event, are amongst the biggest harvest festivals that are observed with much enthusiasm. Have a look. India celebrates a number of harvest festivals to pay homage to the gods for blessing the people with crops and fodder. Different regions in the country celebrate their harvest in the form of a number of different festivals like Makar Sankranti, Lohri and more. In Kerala state of southern India, fragrance of fresh flowers filled the air as the state celebrated the 10-day long annual harvest festival of Onam with great zeal and colour. The festival commemorates legendary King Mahabali's or Maveli's entry back into the state. It is said that the state witnessed the golden period during the king's reign. It is very uh, pleasant uh, atmosphere here. Uh, two years we uh, didn't celebrate Onam. Um, I'm very happy now. We have a big uh, grand function here. As Onam is all about flowers, people make beautiful rangolis using flowers, which are also known as athappu. On this day, Keralites organize different games and also enjoy dancing and playing on the swings. School children celebrated Onam by participating in Tiruvadira, a popular dance form in Kerala. Parents, teachers and students made a 30 meters diameter rangoli with flower petals to mark the occasion. We have prepared all these things. Actually, weeks ago, all teachers, non-teaching staffs, PTA members, mother PTA members, then parents and students have included in planning, arrangement and preparation programs to reach this splendorous situation. In Tiruvananthapuram city, street artists performed Pullikali, a folk dance to mark the celebrations. These artists had their bellies painted with faces of tigers and panthers and wore animal masks as they danced to the beat of the drums. Meanwhile, in Odisha, locals celebrated the three-day-long Naukai festival, which is another harvest festival. Also referred to as Naukai Parab or Naukai Bhit Ghat, it signifies the celebration of newly harvested rice produce. People worship food grains on this auspicious day, which is looked upon as a new ray of hope. The mandate says that the newly harvested rice is cooked and served first to the local presiding deity. Then, the entire family sits down to eat together. Apart from cooking the new crop, a number of food items are prepared to celebrate the special day. It is festivals like Onam and Naukai that are not only a show of flavours and colours, but also of the country's rich cultural diversity. 
Harvest festivals are celebrated with different names across the country. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.